All right, did anybody in here grow up sharing a room with a sibling? Raise your hand if you grew up or you still are maybe sharing a room with a sibling. May the Lord bless you because I never had to share a room with a sibling. You see, I grew up with three sisters, and so as the only boy, I got my own room growing up, but um, my older sister is a few years older, and she got her own room as well, but my little sisters are 18 months younger than me, and they're twins. And so by default, it made sense that the twins would share a room because we only had enough for them to share. And so uh, growing up, I know some of you that shared a room know uh, what that's like. Um, I asked my little sisters what it was like, and I, I got a picture so y'all could see my little twin sisters. And as a good big brother, I thought I'd use the most embarrassing picture I could find. Is that too mean? The pantyhose and everything? Okay, next picture. We'll use a cuter one from Easter one year. Yeah, oh, me and my sisters. So um, I reached out to the twins and I asked them, hey, what was it like sharing a room? What was the best thing and the worst thing about sharing a room together? And one of them texted and the other one hearted it because she agreed with her. And they just said this, the best thing about sharing a room is also the worst thing about sharing a room. There's always somebody there. And so isn't that true that like, There's something that's awesome about having people around and having somebody that's with you in life, but there's also moments that you're like, get away from me, that's enough, especially if it's a sibling. Sorry if I hit any wounds for those of you that share a room tonight, but maybe um, some of you do feel the same way about the room situation, or maybe for you, it's something else. Uh, Maybe you're thinking, I can't wait to have a car of my own, or I can't wait to just move out of the house altogether and have a dorm or apartment of my own. Anybody in that spot, you're ready to move out? Got a few middle schoolers raising their hands. They're already ready to move out. Beautiful. So listen, part of being in middle school and high school is wanting to become your own person. That's a beautiful thing about this age is you guys are in this awesome transformation from being a child to moving into adulthood. And so you develop hobbies on your own. You've got a style of your own, thoughts about your future that are your own. And at the same time, part of growing up is developing a personal faith of your own as well. It's not about having a counterfeit faith that's a copy of someone else's. Manny set this up great last week. Uh, We study the Bible together every week, so if you're here tonight and you don't have a Bible, some of our leaders have some. If you wanna hold up your hand, they'll bring you a Bible. We're gonna open that here in a minute. Chuck's got some here. Raise your hand. We'd love for everybody to have one of the Bibles as we look at it tonight. But think about uh, this counterfeit faith. With that in mind, um, I wanna clear something up at the beginning that What I'm not saying is a faith of your own equals a faith on your own. Listen, experiencing faith for yourself isn't the same as experiencing faith by yourself. I'm just saying there's a time in every mature person's life when they go from believing what someone else says or copying what someone else does to have faith in their life, and it becomes a personal faith that's just for them. And having a faith of your own doesn't mean that you never listen to anybody else. In fact, if you think you wanna have a solid faith of your own, you're gonna need to involve other people, maybe even more than you think. Um, I learned so much about how to love people and have a relationship with God from so many people in my life. Uh, I thought I would just share a few of those with you. I know the list is huge, and there's like the defaults of my parents, who I'm thankful um, brought me to know Jesus and had faith and put that in me. So to skip past some of the automatics of like family, um, the first one was my youth pastor. I want you to be thinking for you, who are some of these people that have given you a great faith or are building faith in your life currently? Maybe for some of you, it's one of the pastors on our staff, and that's, that's an awesome thing um, that maybe you're, you're growing in your faith alongside some of our leadership. But for me, this was Jeff. That's a really long story about a frozen beaver we found in a freezer in Colorado one time. But uh, he's just one of those guys that's still a mentor of mine to this day. When I was your age, this was a guy that was so involved in my faith growing. Uh, My youth group grade, uh, I was very close, and and my small group was some of the guys in this picture. This is our senior year when we were all graduating youth group. But uh, man, that was a time where I learned so much about God because I chose to be a part of a group 
that was trying to do the same thing. And so I love that so many of you are here and so many of you come every week and there's something so beautiful about you guys having several years while you're going through student ministry to help grow each other's faith. You're making a great choice by being here and surrounding yourself with a youth group. It blessed my life. Um, I even thought of uh, all the way back to kind of the beginning of some people that were really building my faith. Uh, this sweet lady in this picture was my kindergarten Bible class teacher. Little five-year-old Adam learned that the Lord was my shepherd. And I learned what that meant, that God was gonna be with me even in the hardest times as a five-year-old because of sweet joys, who's with Jesus right now. But man, all the ages that have poured into me in the different times, and of course, I would be a fool to not mention the ways that my faith has been strengthened because I chose to marry this woman almost 16 years ago. <laughs> who is helping lead worship tonight. But what name comes to your mind? I want you to think really quick um, the list. I mean, there's so many people that hopefully you could think of, but maybe some of you, there's maybe only one person right now that's really helping you grow in your faith. Maybe for some of you, you're, you're really just surrounding yourself with some people, and it, you may not even remember the person's name that started to tell you about Jesus. But think about it, and in five seconds, I want you to call out a name of somebody. I told you about Joyce. I told you about my youth group. You could just yell youth group if you need a default answer or something. But if you've got a name, I want you to own it tonight and say out loud who it is. So think in your mind. Some of you are already thinking, who are the people that have really helped you have your own faith? Five, four, three two, one. Who is it? Man. Listen, I can easily look at these relationships, and a lot of you can look at the relationship you have with the person you just yelled out, and you can see how God used them to help you develop your own faith. It's true for almost anybody who has their, uh, this faith of their own, a faith that's not a copy of the great people before them, but it's this faith for people that are living it out themselves. And whenever you hear a story about someone's journey towards God, you always hear about a relationship not just with God, but with other people. Because that's the way God intended it, is that our journey towards him is going to be strengthened by the people around us. And so hopefully you've experienced some of this in your own life. Maybe your journeys involve someone who's invited you to this church or to this gathering. And that's an amazing thing that some of you are here and your faith journey is moving because somebody was willing even to bring you into this faith community, or maybe it was somebody that helped change the way you think about God, or you've been a part of another Bible study somewhere else, and it's really been growing you. I love that. But to put it simply, the people around us affect our faith. That's true in both positive and negative ways. Just like the right people can move our faith in the right direction, the wrong people can move our faith in the wrong direction, okay? You've probably seen that happen already. Maybe you've got a friend that used to be all about their faith and then they started hanging out with a different crowd. I've seen this in my life. And it's not that they're bad people, it's just obvious that their friends are pulling them away. So here are the big questions. If the people around us have a huge impact on our lives and our faith, which they do, to be clear, how do we find the right people who can help us? And how do we prevent ourselves from being affected by the wrong ones? I wanna start by sharing an ancient piece of wisdom with you in scripture. Open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 13. Um, in ancient cultures, books were written that contained nothing but wisdom and good advice. Oh, if only we had more books written like that today that didn't just have a lot of opinions, but actually had wisdom and really good advice. Maybe there's, there's some good ones out there. But in ancient Jewish culture, those sayings were collected into a book that we now call Proverbs. We're going to Proverbs 13. Anybody remember gold mine last fall? Some of you just read Proverbs last semester. Maybe you'll remember this verse that we're looking at. So Proverbs chapter 13, check this out in verse 20. It says, underline this if you got a pen. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Oh, that's so true. Man, if I were to pick a verse, every student should memorize and live out, like put this in your brain forever and live it out, even just the rest of this year, this might be it, okay? So everybody say this verse with me one time together. Say it with me, read it on the screen. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Man, you don't have to be a Christian for this to be true 
in your life or to be useful. It's true for everybody. The people you choose to spend time with will affect your life. You hang out with the wise, you'll become smarter and do life better. Hang out with fools and you'll get hurt. I mean, we can all think of celebrities that hit like 15, 16, 17, they blow up, and then all of a sudden, you just kind of watch it through social media or through the lens of watching all of the things that they're involved in their life, and it's like, man, you just see the train wreck coming. And all of a sudden, they're, they're on this good path, or you thought they were, and then everything just goes downhill, and all these terrible things happen. And if you watch any type of documentary on their life or something years later, they almost all say the same thing. They began to surround themselves with foolish people. And the Apostle Paul talked about a similar idea when he wrote to the church in Corinth. You see, it's this church full of people who decided to follow Jesus, but they were having a hard time giving up the not-so-great things they'd been doing before they decided to follow Jesus, the things that people around them were continuing to do. And so uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, if you want to turn there, Paul says this. My mom made me memorize this, and it was in the NIV translation. So I always said, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Your New Living Translation says something very similar. Um, but I always remembered it as, do not, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Here's what Paul's basically saying. If you want to move in a better direction... Hang out with people who want the same thing. To every student sitting in here, if you want your life to go in a better direction, start hanging out with people who want the same thing in their life. You see, the wrong influences will impact you in ways that cause these negative behaviors and outcomes. It's just obvious. And just as the person who walks with the wise will be wise, the person who walks with fools will be foolish. You've seen it happen before, haven't you? Maybe one of your best friends started hanging out with this guy or this girl. And everybody heard about this person. They kind of knew, like, man, I don't know if this is good. You kind of watch it happening, and it feels like it's in slow motion. And pretty soon, this friend that you were so close to, you barely recognize him. I'm willing to bet that your friend changed quite a bit. How do I know this? Because it's a timeless principle that is universally true. It was true when I was in school. It was true when your parents were in school. It's been true universally forever because that is what it looks like when we surround ourselves with foolish people. We become fools as well. Um, so I know that some of you are already thinking like, wow, I thought I was supposed to love everybody or that doesn't sound very good for me to just like only pick the good people and just <laughs> all the bad people out of my life or whatever, right? Listen, absolutely, Jesus calls us to love everybody and to spend time with people who aren't like us. But that doesn't mean we invite foolish influences into our inner circle. There's a difference in the people that you bring close and the people that you love like Jesus loved. We don't have to date just anybody, right? We don't have to trust everybody's advice, but this isn't just negative, you guys. It's equally true for the people who are a good influence. And praise God for some of you who right now have some great friends and some great influences. Um, praise God that I got to experience that in some of my earlier years. Um, you may go through seasons where you have great people around you and you feel like you're living a lot better life. And then you may go through some seasons where pretty quick you've chosen some friends that weren't as great and you start to realize my life isn't as great as it once was. I've been there. And so I want you to think about how positive this can be too, that man, when we have these good friends, we celebrate that, we thank God for that. And if we look back at the book of Proverbs in chapter 27, uh, this is one of like the strongest verses about how important um, it can be for us to have these good people and what God does with this. Proverbs chapter 27, it's our last verse we're gonna look at. In verse 17 says this, you can underline it. This is a solid, solid truth. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Now, before I give you just a quick visual on this, um, I brought a knife from home, and I want to demonstrate it with a knife. I cut off part of my finger a few years ago in a tragic knife incident, and so I have, have to be extra careful. That's why I brought the one with the special cover on it tonight. 
But uh, before that, because I had this incident, I was kind of like a little bit traumatized from working with knives and blades of sorts. But it reminded me of this YouTube video that I thought we all needed to enjoy together really quick, which is a guy who is trying to sell a samurai sword on like the QVC shopping channel, and it goes pretty not well. Watch this. 1101, 1816 is the item number on this one. And the nice thing about these practice katanas, Oh, oh, that hurt. Oh, that hurt big time. A piece of that just, the tip just got me, Odell. Oh, that got me good. You all right? A piece of that tip just got me. Oh, Folks, my. right now, we uh, may need emergency surgery in the studio. Anybody watching that live had to be sitting there going, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> so because I didn't want to cut my finger off again, I, we got rid of our sharpener for knives where you're like, shing, shing. You've maybe seen your parents if they work in the kitchen a lot or maybe you help them and they're like, sharpen the knives, son, and they just give it to you. Probably not. So we brought this little guy, right? We bought this online so it's much safer. And what's awesome is um, metal can't be sharpened by silly putty or chewing gum. Obviously, you're going to have to use something else that's this sharp to help sharpen it. And so they make these things where you just simply run it through and it puts the sharpness back in a dull knife because it's going to take something strong, something that strong to help sharpen us. And isn't that so true of our faith? That it's going to take something that strong sometimes to help sharpen us, which is why other people can play this amazing role in interacting with us and helping sharpen us. It's true of wisdom that when it comes to people, stronger friends make us stronger, right? Like that's the application here. Stronger friends make us stronger. And because they make us uh, not only stronger, they actually make us sharper and better at what we're doing, including our faith. They help us develop this faith that's more authentic and less counterfeit. But, and this is a big deal, listen to me. They can only do this, that only happens, that sharpening, when the real you shows up, right? So when the counterfeit you shows up, there's only so much sharpening that can be done when they really don't have the real thing to work with. And we all know what it's like to bring a counterfeit version of ourselves somewhere. Some of you feel like you show up to school with that counterfeit version just about every day of your life right now, maybe. Uh, we know what it's like to talk in a certain way or act in a way that's not really who we are. And sometimes, honestly, y'all, it's super tempting to be counterfeit in church. Because you walk through these doors and you think of all the places I need to look like I've got it all together and everything is good and I'm good. And I don't need, like, this is the place I'm like, oh, I got to kind of like put on the show. So whether you're a teenager or an adult, there's always a temptation to act like we've got it all together, like we don't need to grow we never need help. But when we do that, listen to me, the real me misses out on a chance to grow. The real you misses out on a chance to grow. You see, we need mentors, family members, and friends to help us be sharper and to help move our faith from being just a copy of someone else's to being our very own. And the real us misses out on the chance to be sharpened and to get stronger and sometimes faith feels less real because we are being less real. So the good news is that the opposite is true too. That when you show up as your real authentic self and you have real authentic conversations with your friends or your leader here, God is gonna use those to make your faith stronger and more personal. In other words, real faith grows with other people. Write that down. Real faith grows with other people people. And guys, let me just, as we get ready to go to groups here in a minute, this is why small groups are so important. I know some of you show up here and when we get done with this time and it's time to go to groups, maybe it's hard for you to really engage. But listen, every time they meet, it's an opportunity for us to sharpen each other, to be real with each other. We can challenge each other, grow together. You see, making the decision to show up and be real with a small group every week is like saying, God, I can't create these relationships on my own. Some of you know what this feels like. God, I can't create these relationships. I've been trying to show up here and do this on my own. 
but I trust that if I put myself in their pathway, you can make that change happen. And we think God's going to do that week in and week out in our groups if you'll keep showing up and being real. Trust me, you need this. I need this. We just started our new small group last night. Maybe not right now, but there's going to come a point in life when it does get confusing or difficult. Whether it's a big decision or a painful mess you're in, you're going to want to know that somebody's just a text message away. That's your small group and your small group leader. That's why one of the best things you can do for your life and your faith this week is simply to be real in small group. And I'm not just talking about physically showing up. Some of you need to show up mentally tonight. Some of you, every single week, do everything you can to escape into your phone or to make a joke of everything or to use something to just try to do anything to not really have to engage in a way God wants you to bring your mind into this and to really connect with what's happening in that moment. You're holding back. Maybe some of you need some one-on-one time. Maybe you've been sitting there in the group just blending in, and you're like, man, I'm fine just kind of sitting and not really being known by anybody else. And maybe it's time for you to really say, hey, could I, could I visit with you or share something, or could you pray for me and reach out to a leader? Or maybe it's another student and just say, hey, could we get some one-on-one time? I'd love to kind of go next level and, and maybe get some wisdom from you. Today would be a good day to start that conversation with your leader. Or maybe you know somebody who needs encouragement. Uh, maybe you've been sitting in that group for quite a while and you realize, man, I think I need to maybe speak some truth over somebody that I'm hearing some insecurity or they're forgetting that they're made in God's image and they need to hear it from a friend. And you know it would be great if, if you encourage them, but maybe some of you feel like you're not qualified to do that. Well, maybe your next step is to approach that person, hang out with them a little bit, and allow God to use you. Let him give you words. Let him show you what it is that you need to do to encourage that person. This isn't just about helping you. Just like you need that place, others need that as well. And so when you show up each week, not only do you get that kind of friendship, you also become that kind of friend for somebody else in your group. That's the opportunity you have week in and week out. You get to receive that, but you also get to be that for somebody else. So as we head out to groups tonight, uh, don't miss this, you guys. God wants to be close to you. He wants to feel real to you, to be personal with you. And that's why he hasn't made this complicated. Instead, God put people around you to help you grow and develop a personal, authentic faith of your own. And as you head out tonight to groups, I want you to think about the relationships in your life that draw you closer to God right now. What are the relationships that God is trying to continue putting in your life and pulling you closer to him through? Who do you wish you could hang out with more because you want your faith to maybe look a little bit more like their faith? It's not about us copying their faith. It's about their faith encouraging us to grow our faith more. So tonight's a great chance for all of us to take a step and make other people a priority in our faith journey because real faith grows with other people people. God, as we get ready to go to groups tonight, I, I want to pray over these students, um, maybe just a word of challenge and blessing over what it would be like for them to maybe be real for the first time in their group tonight, that some of these students, they don't have to share the deepest, darkest, worst thing, but maybe it's time for them just to share something real. Uh, God, would you encourage our leaders tonight uh, just, just to know that being here week in and week out and being um, even real about their faith uh, is such a beautiful way to encourage our students to start building their own faith. So help all of us tonight to grow in our faith because we have each other, because we're not alone, because we don't have to sit here in that seat week in and week out and hold our Bible and think this is all on us and we gotta figure this out and figure you out alone, God. You've given us one another for a reason. So help us to lean into that tonight, to rejoice in that, and to enjoy that as we go to our groups in just a minute. Pray this blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen.